The US is forcing Ukraine to resist Russian aggression with its hands tied. This is what The Economist writes. The publication recalls that on September the 13th, there were hopes that Ukraine would finally be allowed to use British and French Storm Shadow Stroke Scalp cruise missiles against targets in Russia. US President Joe Biden and British Prime Minister Keir Starmer spoke for two hours at the White House and many thought that the American leader would finally give his permission. But after the meeting, the situation remained just as uncertain. The American side only confirmed that the policy of limiting the use of Western long-range systems to targets in Ukraine had not changed. The publication also cites the words of the former commander of American forces in Europe, Ben Hodges, in support of Kyiv in this endeavor. There is no moral or legal reason not to achieve these goals, the military man says. In turn, former U.S. Special Representative for Ukraine, Kurt Volker, claims that the U.S. is exaggerating Putin's threats. They're designed to keep us from doing something, not to make it relevant to what he's actually going to do, Volker said. The authors predict that Putin's use of tactical nuclear weapons can never be completely ruled out. However, if Biden softens his position after the meeting with Zelensky, there is unlikely to be an official announcement of permission for Kyiv to attack targets in Russia. Instead, this decision may be private. Recall as the September the 30th deadline approaches, US President Joe Biden faces a critical decision about $5.4 billion in aid for Ukraine. This sum must either be utilized by the deadline or extended through congressional approval. The White House has the capacity to allocate an additional $10.7 billion comprising $5.3 billion from reassessments of previous years and $4.1 billion for USAI, the $5.4 billion allocated under the Presidential Drawdown Authority presents a unique challenge. Experts point out that unlike USAI or FMF funds, Presidential Drawdown Authority does not involve actual money, but is merely an authorization, not a direct source of funding. If Congress extends the $5.4 billion, Biden would still struggle to fully use these funds due to the specifics of the PDA and the resulting financial gaps. Some of these funds might remain unspent and be carried over as available presidential authority into 2024, but without real money to back them up. This would put Biden in a position where he'd need to take political responsibility for providing weapons that won't be replaced with new ones. The strongest typhoon to hit Shanghai since at least 1949 made landfall early Monday with powerful winds and heavy rains after over 400,000 people were evacuated, official media reported. Flights, ferries and train services were suspended in the mega-city and in neighboring provinces, disrupting travel during China's three-day mid-autumn festival. Shanghai's airports canceled hundreds of flights starting Sunday and through Monday, while in Hangzhou, about 170 kilometers, 106 miles, southwest of Shanghai, authorities were also planning to cancel over 180 flights. More than 60,000 emergency responders and firefighters were at hand to lend aid in Shanghai, according to state media. More than 414,000 people had been evacuated by Monday. Typhoon Babinka made landfall around 7.30 a.m. in the sprawling Pudong Business District with maximum winds of 151 km per hour near its center. Shanghai, which has 25 million people, is rarely hit by strong typhoons, which usually make landfall further south in China. Can you move? Oh, it's it. 